Good morning, Europe. Good afternoon, Asia. You're watching Capital Connection, broadcast live from London and Singapore. It is Tuesday, March 27th. The Kremlin begins the sale of Yukos assets seized from the now imprisoned Mikhail Khodorkovsky. Lawyers for the bankrupt group criticized BPTNK for adding legitimacy to the sale of a stake in Rosneft by taking part in the auction. Asian stocks decline after renewed signs of weakness in the U.S. housing market. Investors are now focusing on the all-important confidence data for more clues on the health of the U.S. economy. E.ON wins the backing of a key Endesa shareholder as it waits to see if its new higher offer will be in vain. Hello, I'm Maura Fogarty in Asia. We'll get to those stories in just a moment. And I'm Steve Sedgwick in Europe. Trading is well underway in Asia and we can see actually green across the screen now despite uh, concern about uh, some of the mining assets in Australia. Some of the exporters were under a bit of earlier pressure as well, but Mora has all the details. Yeah, that's right. Just as you said, Steve, the exporters were under pressure today. We had seen some uh, weakening of the U.S. dollar, strengthening of the Japanese yen. That put some pressure on exporters as well. The Nikkei and topics in Japan spent most of the morning in a negative territory. Here in the afternoon session, they still are trading down. The Nikkei is down by half of 1%. The topics down by eight tenths of 1%. We also had a downgrade today of the chip equipment sector, of the chip sector by Credit Suisse, and that's also hurting those stocks in Japan as well. The Kospi, though, in South Korea, putting on some gains. 1,452 is where it stands currently. Let's check in on Hong Kong right now to see where the Hang Seng currently trades. It is slightly softer today, but the Shanghai Composite is at 3,133. This market really has been putting on gains after gains after gains. Very quickly, in Australia, the S&P, SX200, right now is softer by 15 points. As for the FTSE, CNBC Global 300, that is now at 5,616. NYMEX Light Sweet Crude is at $62.81, uh, just down 10 cents here in the Asian trading session. As for Spot Gold, let's check on how that market is doing. $663.50 is how much one ounce is going to cost you. As for the Forex market, Steve, you know, we've been talking about how those uh, new home sales numbers out of the U.S. really surprised the market. That put pressure on the U.S. dollar. Today, though, in Asian trade, we're seeing a bit of recovery here. 118.13 with the Japanese yen currently trades against the U.S. dollar. Euro dollar, 133.28. Steve? Yeah, Maura, and as you were saying, uh, real interest in the home sales data. Of course, we had uh, pretty decent existing home sales numbers on Friday. And this is the context because the new home sales really created a lot of oscillation in these equity markets as well. The S&P 500 unchanged by the close of this session, as indeed was the Dow. But take a look at the Dow session because this one sent the European markets south. I can show, show you here a massive decline as that data hit the wire. It was some of the worst figures we saw uh, in the last seven years on the uh, new home sales front. And that put a lot of these kind of players under pressure. KB Homes, one of the big names in the U.S. housing sector, down 1.9 percent. Toll Brothers under a lot of pressure as well. As we've already mentioned on Capital Connections uh, yesterday, a lot of data on throughout the week uh, in this session. We've got consumer confidence numbers uh, out of the United States this afternoon. Uh, the Treasuries, though, on the back of the data we saw yesterday, just backed up from some of the previous moves, uh, rallying a little bit. The two-year now at 4.59, the 10-year trading at 4.61. I mentioned the European markets under a bit of pressure. Let me show you how they finished yesterday. Red meaning down, green meaning up, but the markets under a lot of pressure across the board. Only keeping us to these levels was the likes of BP and Shell and Total having quite a good run. But by and large, it was a tough session for the blue chips, Mora. It certainly was a tough session for the blue chips in the U.S., Steve, as you talked about there. We did have the uh, or numbers out uh, signaling the U.S. economy, and we had some weak housing data on Monday. Let's get more analysis on this right now with Martin Haneke. He's senior manager of private clients with Bridgewater. Martin, thanks so much for coming on Capital Connection. You know, how do you... You look at Friday's reading of existing home sales, they came in stronger than expected. You look at Monday's reading of new home sales, they came in weaker than expected. Are there two housing markets going on in the U.S., or is it one housing market and no one just seems to be able to know what to do with it? Well, generally speaking, I think the housing market will still uh, get a lot worse than, uh, than where we are today. There's absolutely no question about this. I mean, what we, what we have seen so far is the subprime market uh, unraveling, obviously. But you have to understand that the subprime market really was 
totally excessive and totally speculative market already. I mean, even in the United States, there have been uh, money being lent to uh, people who could not afford to rent a place because they couldn't come up with a deposit. And so they have been actually buying the home because there was no down payment requirement. Some ridiculously loans like this have been made on, uh, to a very large extent. And that is now the tip of the iceberg of what we are seeing that's coming down. And I think definitely uh, going forward, the numbers will be getting a lot worse. Uh, of course, short term, you might have a few fluctuations up and downs. But the big picture is the, thing, uh, the, the position of the United States in this regard will just get a lot worse for sure. Martin, good morning to you. As far as I can see, the headline figure was bad enough, but if you look at the unsold homes data as well, it was up for, to an 8.1 months to clear inventory of unsold homes. That's the worst figure since 1991. Have we really got a hard landing on our hands now? Can we say this is a hard landing rather than a soft landing? Definitely, we have been expecting a hard landing for, for quite a while now, and we have been warning uh, about this repeatedly. And uh, I think, I mean, what we have seen now is really a soft part of something that very, very big that is still going to come. Uh, we expect a very hard landing, perhaps a very deep depression in the United States, not just a recession. Uh, and you see this mortgage, uh, this mortgage problem is now affecting the major banks. You know, you had uh, traders from Merrill Lynch, uh, J.P. Morgan being quoted publicly as saying they value their own securities firms as barely more credit worthy than junk bond status. Uh, you have also other industries uh, being affected very severely on this now. And, uh, and just now, before you mentioned the problems of uh, the Toll Brothers uh, company building the, the McMansions in the United States, I mean, Robert Toll, the, the chief executive of the company, he actually also was being quoted as saying that he hasn't seen these kind of uh, bad conditions or oversupply conditions being worse in the 40 years since he has been in business. So definitely, this is a truly quite an exceptional state the United States is in now. And again, we are advising our clients to remain completely clear of the United States economy, not just the mortgage market, but actually completely clear of mm -hmm. the United States Martin, economy and the U.S. I, dollar. If I can just jump in real quick here, Martin, we don't have much time left, but a sure. deep recession, that's quite a call on the U.S. economy and the U.S. stocks as well. Do you think we're going to see this coming out in the consumer confidence data that will be released later on this week? Well, I don't know. I, I, I think that's very possible that you see this coming out. But let me tell you this. If the U.S. consumers are still very confident at this level and still spending a lot, even though they have basically no money, well, I don't think that would be particularly great news. You look at the savings rates of the United States households, it's worse right now than 1929. So whether they're confident or not, I don't think that will be uh, of a very important role. Okay, Martin, thanks so much for joining us. That's Martin Henneke. He's senior private, or senior manager of private clients with Bridgewater.